Hey, what's going on guys, Kameki in the year, finally we are at the stage when we can start working on the actual AI playing the game of Go, and like I said before, we're gonna be sticking to the implementation by, to, to not to the implementation, but to the ideas uh, introduced by Jonathan K. Millen in his Wally program. So, just to give you a little bit of an idea that it's not something that I've invent invented on my own, but instead uh, sort of an idea that uh, already exists back in 1981, right? So, just want to read through this tiny little paragraph to give you an idea what in particular the AI is supposed to be doing. So, the next step uh, in the design of the program was the decision that Wally would make contact moves adjacent to white stones. In this way, the program would appear to be attempting to capture white groups and would eventually fill up the liberties of each white group and capture it if no defensive action were taken. So, the core idea behind the program, well, uh, here we need to also bear in mind the fact that Wally was only available to play black, uh, yeah, like the first player. Uh, however, in our program, uh, we make it plain uh, being being able to play both sides. So I've reworked the algorithm a little bit. But anyway, uh, here is the first major point we need to take into account. So let's consider we have a group of uh, our stones on the board and computer is playing like for opposite side. So what eventually the computer would do, uh, so by default, he would eventually be trying to capture the group of your stones. So that's that's the core idea. And the rest of the logics are just exceptions to that rule. So, at the time it was clear that Wally also should take some defensive moves to avoid capture. So another idea, if computer's group is about to be captured, it needs to take the, the defensive moves just to fill up the liberty to leave a bit more. This brought up the question of priorities. Uh, when is black group threatened enough to, to, so that Wally should stop attacking white and make defensive moves? So the answer had to be based on the number of liberties remaining in the black and white groups. It was decided that threats would be ignored until a black group has been reduced down to the two liberties. So that's another rule. So uh, if you have less uh, two or less liberties for uh, for your uh, for uh, if computer has two or more or uh, one or two liberties for its own group, uh, it stop it stops surrounding opponent's group and it starts taking some defensive actions, right? So also yeah like and as the extension to that rule, so if we have like the only liberty left, so it just put puts the stone there to save the group unless that uh, uh, is the board edge. Okay, and this is pretty much all the logic that we need to implement. So. Uh, the next thing to have a look at is the pseudocode that I've been showcasing a uh, countless number of times within this tutorial series already. So here the problem is that the logic for the AI is actually hard-coded uh, to make, uh, to take the actions in regards to, to fixed colors. So computer is always playing, uh, is, is always playing black here in this implementation and that's, uh, that also influences the order of uh, the actions being taken on the board. So, in order to make it work for both sites, uh, because we really want engine to play for both sites, um, I decided to slightly alter, uh, uh, to slightly al alter the, the entire logic. Uh, I mean, not really altering it, but rather just uh, regroup it so, to, so, so that it fits the two, uh, so, so, so that it fits Mm, the scenario when computer can play uh, either black or white. So, uh, without further ado, let me introduce uh, the summary that I came up with uh, by re by reworking this pseudocode here. So, here is uh, here are the five steps that AI is going to be considering. And currently, at the moment, there are two there there are four steps has already been implemented, and I will demonstrate you how this exact four steps are currently working. And the pattern match, and the pattern match, and the uh, yeah, matching the patterns is not being implemented yet. So this is going to be introduced a little bit later. So first, we want to uh, focus on this core because this is the core that allows program uh, that that actually teaches program how to fight, how to attack, and how to defend. Okay, which, by the way, uh, despite despite its miserable uh, playing strength in terms of from if if you have a look at this from the professional players level perspective, like it doesn't know anything about uh, letters, uh, uh, creating eyes, and, uh, and, even, and it doesn't even try to grab the territory, it only tries to, ca to capture opponent's group. But anyway, uh, 
this makes uh, the style really a human-like style. I mean, like, not the professional human, but a noob like me, human-like style. So, uh, uh, like, absolute beginner that was just introduced to the game, just knows a couple of tricks, and that's that's how you feel. So, if you've been playing uh, with noobs uh, online, uh, if you've been playing Go with noobs online, then you definitely recognize this style, because it's, it's really, yeah, it's like a signature. All right, so... Here are the points. So the first point, uh, if opponent's group have only one liberty left, then capture it. So this is uh, the first thing we want to do, right? So if we are able to capture next move, then we consider it. This might not be the best ever idea, but anyway, so, uh, yeah, but with the way uh, the matter of order of the actions being taken is going to be discussed a bit, uh, a bit further on. So here I just list uh, I just list all the options that are available, but the order might, might vary here. If the group uh, of the side to move has only one liberty, then save it by putting a stone there unless it's a board edge. So the, another is action is a defensive action, right? Then, if the group of the side to move has two liberties, then choose the one resulting in more liberty. So let's say uh, you can extend the existing, uh, the existing shape and Whichever of two options you would be considering, so you have only two liberties, you would be considering the one that eventually results in more liberties. So that's that's quite pretty self-explanatory. Uh, and then, if opponent's group have more than one liberty, uh, then try to surround it. So another option. So th this this is the main uh, this is the core, by the way, the uh, the core logic. So by default, the program would tr would be trying to surround. Uh, your stones. So, for instance, let's have let's imagine the, the situation when you have a group of stones uh, on a board, right? And then uh, you just make it pass, 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 pass all of the time. So, what the program would be trying to do, it would be trying to capture a group of stones. I will now demonstrate all these steps, uh, all these features, uh, step by step, and also have this nice mark markings here, so prints which kind of move the program takes every time it responds, right? And here uh, is one of the most essential parts. So this is the logic to uh, which move to consider. So here uh, you create, uh, so uh, when it scans the board for the possible moves, it can, can find the moves like capture, uh, just capture opponent's group, save own group, defend, so if you have two liberties to extend, or otherwise, uh, and by default, surround the opponent's group. So. Uh, all the all the moves might be available, or just some of those, and depending on the of the com, uh, depending on the combination of those moves that are actually available here, uh, the program would take the following action. So, if it's not a capture and it's not uh, a defend, and and there is no way to defend, uh, uh, to defend uh, like uh, to liberties and to extend, and if uh, it's not it's also it's not a save move, so it's, your your group is not about to be captured. Only in this case, you, you should consider surrounding opponent's group. That's important. Another scenario, so if it's not a capture, if it's not a save move and not a defend, uh, and it is a defend, so it's, it try, tries to, you have only two liberties, and now you need, instead of uh, capturing opponent's stones, you need to start thinking about saving your own stones. So in this case, the defensive move, like extending uh, to gain more liberties, this, this move is considered. The next scenario, so if it's not capture, not defend, and it is the save move, so if you have just one, if you're one stone away from being captured, you know, the, your entire group, then definitely you need to consider saving this, if only it's not going to the board edge. And finally, if this is the capture, then you just capture. And that's, that's pretty much how it works. Now, um, here I have uh, this kind of... Uh, Drive development version of Wally that I've prepared to, to uh, as a basis for the fur further tutorials is already connected here to the Sebeka GUI, and uh, well, I probably uh, yeah, I, I just want to demonstrate you this step by step. So yeah, okay, let's let's just try to let's just try to play, and this this is gonna be uh, clear by the time I'm making the move. So I want Wally to play as white player, and let's start. So here, uh, down below, you can see that capture move wasn't found, the save move wasn't found, defense move wasn't found, so only the surround move. And in this case, if it's not capture, not save, not defend, in this case, we do consider surrounding, uh, surrounding the stones. And this, 
this is the exact way so he will try he would now try to surround my stone so just to give you an idea if i make some dumb moves you see like it's trying to surround and capture my moves if i try to extend it would still be trying to surround this and if i try to extend even more and even more it would still be trying to surround this until it captures it finally so now i captured the group so far so good but obviously you're not going to be playing like that right so don't save and here uh yeah as white player let's try again so now for instance uh here is another scenario so now uh this after i made this move uh before this move was done there were only two liberties for this stone left and that means that uh he now has two options so he can he can either continue surrounding me or start taking defensive actions but since he only have two liberties here he starts taking defensive actions hence he extends his group of stones like this so now the next move for instance the next move uh it's not, it now has one two three liberties so it's uh he doesn't need to uh, defend anymore and he's instead trying to surround me right over in here so it's like he's trying to surround me in this case so the best move is the surround move right and we go further on now you see like he protects uh so again he takes the defensive move so e8 here so this this kind of stone had only two only two liberties right so it takes the defensive action so because I, if i infiltrate here then definitely it's going to be a trouble because i just capture this stone so he takes the defensive action here and i want to close as well now nothing else to be done so he goes for actually surrounding me in this case all right so uh i didn't yet demonstrate how he uh, how he saves well probably this is about to be done just right in the moment so for instance if i play here then this stone is, is going to be about to be captured so let's have a look what what happens here so see like save g5 so best move is going to be g5 because uh it might look like he extends but actually he saves this only stone from being captured right so that's that's kind of how it works now if i play here now he ha now he takes the defensive move because there were only two liberties here and here and so on so this is how this is how it actually plays so well actually well obviously it's not uh it's not really <laughs> kind of that strong and it's really easy to trick the program and still to win but uh basically uh here uh, I, i've just i've just shown all all the possibilities that that we have here so let's just make a few more dumb moves to let him cap uh, to let him surround the group and now the next move is gonna be the capture move so you just notice that i just play another move and you see capture g9 and this is exactly what is the case this is exactly the case so he has just captured my group so I hope this is clear uh, in regards to how this works and this also can work on the bigger board so let's for instance consider the 19 by 19 board well obviously he's not going to uh, trying to grab the territory and instead uh, it would just be uh, trying to like uh, surround my stones that's the only thing that he knows how to do so if i just try to play a few moves okay so am i am i in trouble here already uh i'm not sure but yes yeah, actually that's actually okay oh man i just blundered <laughs> so yeah you see like for a new blake me this uh this, this might be really really nice then so now the next move is about to capture my group so i can do nothing to that you see like so he just won he just won this battle for uh for a corner well that's because i'm, I'm so, such a new player but anyway so just to give you an idea so what is so he goes even for this three by three in, uh, invasion here yeah, that's a little bit okay so what else we can do yeah if i only knew how to play go yeah that wouldn't be the case but you see like uh again like just for for noobs for noobs for noob level player like me this this kind of works and yeah i just try to grab some territory and by the time i'm trying to grab some territory i feel like he's going and crushing my uh he's trying to crush through my stones so 
Eventually, surprisingly here, we, have, we actually have a program that we can play the game of Go against. And for me already, this is interesting. And, and, and again, like this, uh, this program really feels like, uh, like a beginner human player to me. Because, yeah, it doesn't know anything but to capture. So it's more like playing the capture Go rather than uh, doing something useful there. But anyway, that, that's kind of fun, right? So, yes, um, you see, like, yeah, uh, uh, <laughs> okay. So you, you just saw this on your own, guys. So this is the AI that we're supposed to be developing within the next few videos. And when we get done with this sort of a thing, we will then add the pattern matching. Uh, which uh, would make uh, it also care about its shape and those moves would would look like according to Jonathan Camille they would look like the most intelligent moves right so uh, this was uh, an introduction video to to the AI that we're supposed to be building and starting from the next one we're gonna be implementing this sort of like the logic to come up with this sort of moves step by step and then we'll bundle all together and yeah, then we'll see what happens. So this is it from my side. Thanks for watching. A little next time and take care.